So the message is entitled, The Endurance of the Saints. The Endurance of the Saints. And we're going to start in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And we will start in verse 10. Revelation chapter 13, verse 10, which is found, please say amen. amen. Speaking about the first beast, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So here in just the first part of this verse, we see whatever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. You know, the saying is what goes around comes around. So as the papacy was persecuting and killing God's people, the papacy itself gets a deadly wound. Amen? Amen? But for us here today, the Bible says, Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So we, God's people, must have the patience of the saints and the faith of the saints. Amen. So the message for today is the endurance of the saints. And that word patience can be translated endurance. Right? Now the Bible teaches us in the book of Mark, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we as God's people must have endurance. We must have perseverance. We must have faith as well. The reason why, as you see that in the context of the papal persecution, they had enemies coming from within, they had to be on the run, and persecution was constant upon them. So their trust, their faith, their belief in God had to be strong because if they didn't, they would have compromised and lose their faith. So in these last days, we must have strong faith and endurance because every, as you see, as we get closer and closer to the second coming, Satan is coming, more deceptions is coming. You see, the Bible says Satan deceived the whole world. And the Bible tells us that we should be aware of his devices. We should not be caught unaware. So therefore, not only the pastor, not only the elders, every Seventh-day Adventist needs to be a watchman on the walls of Zion. Yes. Yes. Because if we are not watchmen, what will happen is we will be deceived by Satan with all of his deception as he is bringing them upon God's church. And as we're talking about endurance, and in the last days, if what this world has gone through from 2020 to 2021, if your knowledge in regards to health has not been improved, you have a problem. Yes. Because we know that the health work, the medical missionary work, is the last work to continue on. Because there's, as we see, there's disease and prevalence and sickness all over now, but it's going to only escalate. It's going to escalate to tremendous levels, and this is where we, God's people, need to fill the gap. Yes. Because the medical missionary work is the entering wedge. Yes. Now, the hospital way and the drug way... The Spirit of the Lord tells us drugs does not cure disease. God has given us methods to deal with disease God's way versus man's way. Because the man's way, hospital way, is take this drug. You take this drug, you've got one problem, you have five more problems from side effects. And then it's a continual, never-ending, constant people on drugs. Okay, this is not God's way. God's way is for His people to be in health. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may be in health and prosper even as thy soul prospered. So how do we put this together? As much as you should care about your connection with God, your relationship with God, your prayer life, your study life, your evangelism, in the same emphasis you put in your work as a Christian to enter the kingdom of God, you should put that same emphasis in regards to your own health. Because why? If you are sick and laying in a bed, for weeks, are you witnessing to souls? No, you just want to sleep, leave me alone, don't want to bother me. I don't even want to answer my phone. You just want to take good care of yourself. But if we are in health, what we can do? We're constantly working, working, working. Why? Because we are in a spiritual battle. We There is spiritual warfare taking place. 
and we all are soldiers under the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel. And we all have work to do. The young have work, the old have work, middle age have work. We all have to work for Christ. Yeah. If you're not working for Christ, you're on the enemy's side. Yes. You must be active for the Lord. So therefore, we need to have the endurance and we need to have the faith of the saints. The faith yeah. of the saints. Because Satan's attack right now primarily is a mental attack. Yes. He's seeking to break people down mentally by the attack of be it the shutdowns or the job, the workplace and yes. the separations and people are having fearful and some people are in the hospitals. He's seeking to break down your mental psyche yes. so that you will just be depressed. Yes. And depressed and then woe is me, I don't even have to, I don't even want to read the Bible, I don't even much just want to witness, and then he knocked you out. Mm. So this is why in the climate in which we are living, your faith needs to be at all time high. Yes. Your yes. endurance, your strength, your your power, connection with God needs to be at an all time high because it's only gonna get worse and worse. Remember, the seal of God is placed in the forehead. Satan is attacking your mind mentally to break you down so that you will be have anxiety, stress, panic, and worry but not being about your father's business. So therefore, we need that close connection with Christ to endure until the end. So it says we need the faith of the saints. Now in the next chapter, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, speaking about those who will receive the seal of God, speaking about the 144,000, when John sees this group of people, here, in contrast to those who get the mark of the beast, who follow the image of the beast, who received the wrath of God, which is the seventh to last place. In contrast, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Jesus. So therefore, they must have the faith of Jesus. Now, mm. what was the faith of Jesus? Jesus said, I do always those things that please my Father. Right? Yes. My Father is with me. I do always those things that please Him. Jesus even in Garden of Gethsemane, the same prayer three times. If there be any other way, Father, is there any other way other than the cross? He still went through because he stood to his mission and he did the Father's will. Yes. So therefore, we as God's people must be about our Father's business and nothing must detract us from the work which God has called us to do. Yes. Because it is a work that no other church in the planet mm. can do. And as we are here together, where two or three are gathered, Christ is in the midst. And it's very nice as we are as small as you see here in the home house church, when you read in the book of Acts, what was happening? The, the people met house to house. Mm -hmm. And you see, the early reign during Pentecost has this parallel to what's going to take place during the latter reign. Yes. As you see, many are called, but only few are chosen. The majority is going to go along the way of the world and be lost. But that small remnant will be those who have the patience of the saints, and they will keep God's commandments and have the faith of Jesus. This is why it's wise in these last days, to study the early chapters of great controversy. Yes. When you study these God-fearing men, mm. John Huss, mm. John Wycliffe, yes. Tyndale, yes. Martin Luther, mm -hmm. how their faith was so strong that they would even die, <laughs> be martyrs for the cross, mm. martyrs for Jesus. Nothing would detract them from turning away aside and compromising. Their connection with God was so strong. And we need that faith because it's persecution coming again. Oh, yes. It is coming again and it's going to be coming very strong upon God's people who keep the commandments of God. So this is why during the time in which we are living and Satan's plan during this whole time is to get God's people, shut them all down so that they're not about their father's business. But at the same time, God is giving us a test now to see in this pretest, will you survive the pretest before the great final test of the mark of the beast? 
how is your faith now will determine how will you be when greater temptation is going to come. Yes. So we must not give in to Satan's attack. It's an attack on the mind. It's an attack on God's people. Now, if you read the last day events, we're told that in the final crisis, because God is love, not everyone will have that faith or the endurance to go through the time of trouble and to go through the little time of trouble. Hmm. And God will have to, in His mercy, lay some to rest. Yes. Speak about, she speaks about primarily some of the elderly and some of them that are very, very young. So if within your heart that you love Jesus and you want to be among those who are translated without seeing death and see Him coming in a cloud of glory and be translated, change in the twinkling of an eye, and you want to be among that group, brothers and sisters, our faith must be strong. Yes. If our faith is not strong enough, God, because He loves us so much and will not give a temptation which you cannot take, He will lay you to rest. <laughs> and you'll have to be raised, if you're faithful, in the special resurrection. But... Wouldn't it be a blessing to be translated without seeing yes. death? Yes. To go through all of that yes. and to see our Lord and be translated. Amen? Amen. So yes. if we want to be among that group and the special blessings of giving to the 144,000 that they follow the Lamb whithersoever thou goest and all those blessings, we will have to have strong faith and endure and nothing will detract us from the course because you're going to see compromise on all directions. Mm. You've been talking to one it's person that you knew as an Adventist for all these years and you're hearing them giving up the faith or going back into the world and I was shocked. I couldn't believe him. I couldn't believe she. And you see people just dropping like dominoes mm. during the pressure. So now we are in the testing time and the great test is coming. We must be strong in the Lord. Amen. So we're going to go to now the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And we're going to just look at a parallel as we get into today's message. In Matthew, chapter 24, Matthew 24, verse 4, the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. Verse 24. For there shall be arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, the very elect here, the 144,000, even them could possibly be deceived, but they're not because they are anchored in the Word of God. So four times, Jesus, in the chapter of end times events, Jesus is telling us, beware of deception. What the media tells you, what the governments are telling you is mostly always opposite. Yes. Trust you. The, those who have your good interests in mind is Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay? Mankind will constantly lie and switch and be turncoat, but God never changes. Jesus yes. is the same yesterday, today, and I am the Lord. I change. So Jesus is the anchor. Jesus is firm, he is stand for, he is a pillar, and he is our pillar in these last days. So we must beware of deception. Things that appear one way can be actually the opposite. So as we see, Matthew 24, deception, false prophets, and we see, we're going to see miracles taking place. Matthew 25 speaks about the condition of the church, yes. right? The ten virgins. Yes. You are wise and you have foolish. And both of them, they had the wise and the foolish, but the foolish took the lamps and had no oil. And the oil, as we know, has to do with the Holy Spirit, which we need to endure to receive the latter rain. And then it goes into the parable of the talents. So Matthew 24 tells us 
signs in the world. You're going to have earthquakes. You're going to have pestilences. All these things taking place. Beware of deception. The condition of the church in Matthew 25. Now let's go to Luke. And we're going to see a similar parallel as we're going to be staying in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 17 and Luke chapter 18. Now in Luke chapter 17... We, you see events that speaking about the end time. For example, verse 26. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the, into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them. Oh, okay. During the time period of Noah, it's speaking about here, and it's a parallel to us in these last days. Now, what I've realized is, especially in the words of Jesus, when Jesus says something is going to happen, it happens, it happens, but in a magnified, worldwide extent so that no one can really miss it. All right? So here we see eating, drinking, giving, and marrying, and they were given in marriage. And we see that now. People have one wife, divorce, wives, wives, wives. Then we have fornication taking place. Drunkenness is taking place, and then one of the prevailing sins of this time is also appetite, mm. right? People just cannot deny themselves, and here they have trouble with appetite. Now, so that's taking place, but also in the time of Noah, there was violence, and the thoughts of mankind was only evil continually. And we see what is taking place in this world. We are seeing bold-faced murders taking place in broad daylight. We are seeing robberies taking place. We are seeing children disrespectful of parents. We are seeing rudeness. We are seeing how what is taking place now that's even allowed to be on television. We are seeing LGBT. We are seeing everything compounding in this generation, right? As it was in the days of Noah. But then next he switches to as it was in the days of Lot. They ate, drank, bought, sold, planted, they built it. But the same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and drenched from heaven and destroyed them all. So here we see the main sin of Sodom we know is homosexuality. Yes. And we see this now on a global scale. So much that they say that we have a whole month we're going to dedicate to the LGBT. And they are boasting in people, everyone's faces, parades and everything. This is how we're doing it. So it's basically an attack upon God. And what's interesting is that the majority of people on this earth are heterosexual. Man and a woman as God's ideal it would be. And hence comes procreation. But because Satan hates mankind, because Satan hates the fact that angels cannot procreate, so God has made us in his image, and we have the ability to have children, and godly children here, and God's kingdom can grow, Satan wants to attack the family. He's attacking marriage hard, so therefore, are these are your children you've created in your image? And marriage is a type of the Godhead in the sense that unity, yes, yes. the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they are one. Mm -hmm. In family, when you have a father, son, and they all have the same last name, the same unity there. Satan attack on that is, well, I will have woman with woman and man with man to deface the image of God in humanity. Okay, so that is the goal with Satan's plan. Satan's plan is always to flaunt and get mankind to sin and push that in God's face. Because Satan's plan is to attack Christ. Every time Satan fought Jesus, he always loses. Okay? He was cast out of heaven. He consulted about the body of Moses. The Lord rebuked him. Every time Michael and Satan goes head to head, he always loses. Because God never loses. Amen? God has omnipotent power. So because... Satan cannot ever win against God. He attacks who God's love, which is us, the children, his children. But, similar like a bear, when you attack a mama bear, sees her child in danger, what does a mama bear do? You see the power there. So when Satan attacks God's children, 
here comes Jesus in defense. Amen? So every time his plan always backfired on him. Always. Because God is a million steps ahead of Satan's plan. Amen? So in Luke chapter 17, the Bible says what? Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. She turned around. She looked back upon everything that was there in Sodom and she turned into a pillar of salt. So let us remember that. So now, as Luke 17 draw a parallel about the time of Noah and the time of Lot, and also verse 21, righteousness by faith, neither shall they say lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's the kingdom Jesus bringing, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The kingdom yes. of God is within you. So that is what Jesus wants his people to have. The kingdom of God within you. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 18. Now, in Luke chapter 18, as was spoken about earlier, here we see a parable. Jesus speaks a parable unto them about a widow woman. She's saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So this parable of the widow woman and praying here, the judge in this parable does not fear God, the Bible says. Okay? So he's not a God-fearing man. So therefore, this judge would be a merciless judge. And if you are found guilty because he fears not God, he has no mercy upon you. Right away, he will be a type of judge which will give you the death penalty or life imprisonment because he has no compassion. But it says here in verse 3, the woman was pleading saying, avenge me of mine. Adversary. Now, who is the adversary of mankind? The devil. The devil. Satan is the adversary of mankind. It says in Christ's object lesson, The woman who entreated the judge for justice had lost her husband by death. Poor and friendless, she had no means of retrieving her ruined fortunes. So she's pleading, avenge me, avenge me. But he will not for a while, because he does not fear God. And then it says in verse 6, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he Hallelujah. find faith on the earth? Yes. Shall he find faith on the earth? That's the question. Hmm. And it's posed there as a question because it's going to be so few. Hmm. Shall he truly find faith on the earth? Here is the faith of the saints. We need to have that faith. So it says in Christ's object lesson, speaking about this parallel, Christ here draws a sharp Contrast between the unjust judge and God. The judge yielded to the widow's request merely through selfishness, that he might be relieved of her importunity because she kept coming and bothering him. He felt for her no pity or compassion. Her misery was nothing to him. How different is the attitude of God toward those who seek him? The appeals of the needy and distressed are considered by him with infinite compassion. So this is one of those par parables whereby God is showing his character by contrast. God is not like this judge at all. God is loving and kind and willing to answer his people when they call out to him. Often the elect people of God have to stand before many official positions who do not make the word of God their guide and counselor, but who follow their own unconsecrated and undisciplined impulses. So therefore, a lot of judges are not God-fearing. Now there is a parallel because it says here in same Christ object lesson, 
Often those who suffer reproach or persecution for their faith are tempted to think themselves to think for they are forsaken by God. In the eyes of men, they are in the minority. To all appearance, their enemies triumph over them. But let them not violate their conscience. He who has suffered in their behalf and has borne their sorrows and affliction has not forsaken them. Amen. Now, this parable primarily is context. When you read in Christ after Glesson, it's speaking about the time of trouble. When God's people are going to be hunted down, some are in caves, some are in prisons, some are in mountains, desolate places, and here comes the enemies trying to kill them. When that is going to be taking place and God's people are going to be crying out, it's going to seem as if God has left them. Mm. And therefore, they're going to be continually crying to God for deliverance. And it's just as with the parallel with the Red Sea. The enemies coming from behind their corner, how are they going to pass the sea? It is when then God opens up the Red yeah. Sea and deliverance comes. So it is at that time when things are the darkest, when things are there's nowhere out. This is when God shows as I am God, that is no problem for me. I will save my people. So right now, when we're going through troublesome times and things look dark, never forget that it is at the darkest moment that Christ is near you. Yes, yes. When Jesus was on the cross and there was darkness all through over the earth at that time, we're told in Desire of the Ages, even though Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's, Ellen White says that God the Father was right beside him in the darkness. Hmm. And if there was not that darkness and the Father was there, everyone would drop dead from his glory. So he had the darkness there and he was beside him right there. So it is when we are in our darkest moments, know that God is with you. And at many times, Ellen White says, if our eyes could be opened, she said, we would see the angels of God having, she says, physical combat with the evil angels, pushing them back and having power from God to make a space so that your prayer can be answered. She says that the battles that the good and the bad angels face are just as real as those in combat. So your guardian angel, when you are praying to God and asking for strength to get victory over whatever sin it is or what you're going through or praying for someone, know that angels that excel in strength are right beside yes. you. Amen. We are never alone. Yes. We have angels and we have God on our side. So this is why this parable is so important because when God's people during the little time of trouble, we're told some will be in prison. You might be in prison all alone. You may be in this place all alone. Mm. But even though no physical human being may be there, angels Hallelujah. are there. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Angels are there. The and we're told that those who are in the prisons during that time, angels will bring them food. Amen. And they will get visits from angels. Yes. Amen? Yes. So this is what is coming in the future. So here in Luke 18, this parable is to... It's this, this whole chapter is preparation for the coming crisis. This is preparation for the mark of the beast crisis. This is what God's people ought to be doing to be ready for the second coming of Jesus. And the first thing we see in this chapter is, verse 1, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen? Jesus who is God, rose up early and he had that communion time with the Father. And we're told that that's what strengthened him for the non-stop attack by the devil. No human being has faced temptations like Jesus has faced. Yes. No one. Because Jesus is the Son of God. Picture the Son of God and Satan knows that if Jesus sins one time, mankind is over and then his, his life can prolong. Okay? So his meetings with his demons is one thing. I don't even care about these other people here. Put all our attacks on Jesus. He must sin. He's having meetings with all the demons. Do everything you can to get Jesus to sin. Picture every demon that Satan has just focusing on one person. Alone. 
That is their plan. We must get Jesus to sin. Three temptations in the wilderness. That didn't work. Jesus in Gethsemane. That didn't work. And this is why when Jesus was on the cross, this is why he had men saying, Calm down. Calm down. Jesus, Satan didn't want Jesus to die on the cross. Because he knew if Jesus died without sin, his fate is over. So this is why he's tempting Jesus on the cross. Calm down if you're the Son of God. Show. you calling for Elijah. Calm down. Getting Jesus to show forth his divinity and calm down. So Jesus was tempted from within and without. Mm. The strongest temptation ever and Jesus was victorious. Amen. And we can be victorious too because yeah. Jesus is our example of all things. And if we are his children, he is with his people. Amen? Amen. So this parable of the unjust judge is preparation for the little time of trouble and Jacob's crime of trouble. Great Controversy says, It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality. But this is not true of the crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. <laughs> Alright, so whatever your imagination of the worst situation upon planet Earth when Satan takes full control and everyone on Satan's side is demon-possessed, and Satan has the ability to just destroy people, your worst imagination, God says, through the servant of the Lord, it's going to be a million times worse. You can't even imagine it. So if you can't even imagine it, this is coming. This is why God says we must persevere in prayer. Because we cannot endure this time period without Jesus. Amen? Jesus is asking us to find faith and have persevering faith because we will need that communion with God when everyone will be against us. Amen? Yes. And we're told even former SDAs mm. will be one of our worst persecutors. Yeah. She said when we're before the courts, they will be there to accuse us. Yes. So those who you even know will turn on you mm. and it says, everyone will be against. Whoever's not on the Lord's side will be used by the enemy. So we must be faithful unto the end. Amen? Amen? Now next, after that, in Luke 18, Jesus is teaching about two men who goes up to the temple. This is very well known. Two men goes up to pray. One's a Pharisee and the other's a publican. publican. So Pharisee, this is the religious leaders in the time of Christ. Publicans are the tax collectors for the Roman Empire. The hated, the despised one. Matthew was a publican and the Pharisee stood and praised doth with himself. You hear that? He is praying with himself. What does he say? God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God be merciful to me of. So this Pharisee believes in righteousness by works. Yes. Because I fast, because I give tithes, because I do this, because my life is, in my own estimate, better than these other people, mm. I'm heaven bound, Preach. and they're into that lake Preach. of fire. All right, I'm just waiting for translation. And God says, I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. Because what is the lesson God is teaching us? For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. Abased means humble, humiliated. And he that humbled himself shall be exalted. So the lesson for us in these last days is we must be humble. Yes. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Only the meek. And Jesus says, come and learn me, for I am meek and lowly. All right? Only those who are like Christ will reign with Christ. And one of the main characteristics of Christ is Christ is meek and lowly. So we are to be like Jesus. We must be meek and not be 
proud and boastful and feel that, well, we have the truth or because this person isn't doing this, I am better than this person. The worst sinner in this world, it doesn't matter. We all are on the same ground. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. Yes. That is for every human being on the planet. Yes. You could be in God's church. You could be abiding in Christ. Guess what? The Bible says, I die daily. If you are not surrendered daily, the one day you could be out of Christ That's and Satan right. take you That's out. Right. So therefore, this is why we're told, when we get to heaven, it's going to be a surprise. Yeah. Think people yeah. you might not be, realize is there, oh, is there. And I'm yes. looking for this person, yes. this faithful person. Yes. He's not there. Yes. So, therefore, we must be humble. And this is why, because we're to be humble, we must pray for our brethren. Yes. And this is why it's a very good thing to have in small churches where everyone knows yes. each other. Yes. Where everyone, one person's Preach, not here, preacher. and you can follow up on each other, yes. knowing everyone's name. Yes. And this mega church, 500 people, you don't even know anybody. I know maybe two people because there's so many people. But the smaller group, we can pray together, we can study yes. together, we can encourage one another and work together to build up the kingdom of God. Amen? Yes. This is what God is walking, wants us to have. So the Pharisee was prideful, the publican was humble. The essence of this parable is to be humble and not to look at others for a standard of righteousness. Because Jesus is our standard of righteousness because Jesus never sinned once. Mm. Therefore, Jesus is who we look to, not to man. Put yes. not your trust in man because mankind will turn on you, but Jesus will not forsake you ever. So we are to be humble. First parable, pray. Unceasingly, pray to God for the cause was coming, little time of trouble and great time of trouble. Second, we looked at the Pharisee, we're learning about being humble. We must be humble to go through the yes. time of trouble. And I had, did a sermon talking about on YouTube about your day in court. And especially here, the humbleness. When you read Great Country and you see Luther at the Diet of Worms and how the Holy Spirit comes upon him and he speaks with power. If you're going in the courthouse, all eyes on you, and you're thinking, and you're going to speak before them. Mm. And then when they say this, and you're going to say, well, I'm going to show you. Yeah, you, know. yeah, you fail. Yeah. Because that's not the character of Christ. Yes. But if you're meek and lowly, and in prayer, you can be 100% used by God. And you read about Wycliffe came before all these people. He just said the truth, and then he just left. And they were just spellbound, and like, what just happened? And the same thing with Elijah, filled with the Holy Spirit. He called, Elijah said what he had to say, Elijah just left. No rain, I'm out of here. That's it. And they, didn't, they couldn't get him. So when we're filled with God, we can be used by God, but we have to be humble. And to be ready to speak for God, we must have a strong prayer life. Yes. Now verse 15 here, through 17. And they brought unto him also infants, and he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked. Yeah. They read them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So if we're dealing with end time events preparation, here we see Jesus is speaking about the little children. Forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. So what is the main characteristic when you have children that God wants us to have to be ready for the final crisis? It's one word. Trust. Trust. A child, with a child and father, you could just have a cliff over here and say, jump. Yeah. That child is not going to think, well, I'm this small. If I jump here, I can break my neck. They just jump. They would just obey because they have that trust. When any time they're scared, cry out, Daddy, come! They trust in their dad, their mother, to save them. Anything which bothers them. So we, our children, we are children. God is our Father. So as same how our little children trust in us, 100% that 
Daddy's here. I have no fear. Mommy's here. I'm protected. We should have that trust in God. Amen. Yeah. This is why he said, like little children. Because when Satan comes with all of the attack, no one can buy or sell. Persecution coming from within. You can't buy. You can't work. You can't pay any bills. You're on the run. People are coming after you. Jesus is saying, trust me. Yes. Trust me. I can see you through. Yes, sir. That is what Jesus is teaching us. We must trust God even when everything looks like Satan has control of everyone. It looks like to all appearances that Satan is one. Trust God. Amen? Yes. Trust God. And then when we continue on, we see here the rich young ruler. We are well away with the rich young ruler. Now, let's start in verse 26, because we're acquainted with the rich young ruler, right? Mm -hmm. 26, and they heard it said, who then can be saved? Because that's what we want to know. Yeah. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are? Possible. Possible. So this is what we must remember. Though all are coming after God's people, it may seem like there's no way out. With God, oh, all God. things God. are God. possible. Amen. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdoms, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, everlasting life. Now, we are told, in even by the words of Christ, that even a house, they're going to be at variance. It may be the wife is serving the Lord, the husband serves the Lord, the children. So we are told in these last days, there's going to be many times division in the household. Mm. Because Satan attack is on the whole. Yes. Right. So one person may be strong and Satan is pulling this one down. And Satan want to use this one to pull this one down. The children pull down the father. The fa This is his plan. So here we are seeing Jesus is telling us. In this here, there is saying that there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren, brothers and sisters, or even a wife for or children for the kingdom of God's sake. Meaning, God comes first. That even if your spouse does not want to follow the Lord, you continue on right. and continue to pray and continue to beseech the Lord on this person's behalf. But don't let that person pull you down and Satan get all of you. One person who's strong, you strengthen the weak and continue to pray. Yes. Ask the brethren, let us pray together. But we must serve the Lord and let no one take our crown. Amen. Yes. Because we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ alone. Yes. Alone. Yes. Children aren't with us. Spouse is not with us. We came into this world by ourselves and salvation is individual. Yes. And that's what it says in Ezekiel. Though Daniel, though Job be in the land, they will only save themselves. Godly Job couldn't save his children. Godly Daniel, only himself. So therefore, salvation is an individual matter. Individual matter with God. But that's why at the beginning, we must continue to pray for those who Satan is attacking. So in this parable here, not really parable, in this story, what do we learn? That... Things may seem impossible. With God, all things are possible. Yes. So that all things, in the context, speaking about of those who may forsake it, all things is possible that God can even convert that person right. that you're praying for. It's possible with God. Amen? Amen? Not to give up and not to faint. Amen? We must keep on and keep on. Now, this here, 31 to 34, is very interesting. As we look at this, We've seen Jesus has constantly been repeating himself. Behold, we go to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Verse 32. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted upon. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Verse 34. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. So, what is the parallel now? 
spiritual things are spiritually discerned. So therefore, as these things are taking place in this world, you may be seeking to explain to, to someone, this is Satan attack what is taking place. All of this is preparatory for the mark of the beast. We must be in tune with God, and there, there's just nothing is registering. It's like talking to the wall. Nothing is getting in because spiritual things are spiritual exactly, and this is why the conference doing madness. You're just like they're just gone because they are following the world. So if they are following the world and the world is forsaking Christ, when the mark of the beast is enforced, what is their pattern? Follow whatever the world is doing, right? Go along, keep Sunday, right? So we must be in step with God. But it's showing us in these last days, Jesus is telling us many people will be deceived. And therefore, they were not going to understand what is taking place. Even though the Bible says it and the Spirit of Prophecy says it. But if they're not reading it and they're not believing it, it's you're talking to the wall, basically. So Jesus is saying, in these last days, amongst his people, because he was speaking to the disciples, you're having two classes within God's church. Wise and foolish virgins, those who are in tune of God, those who can see the events, see what it is heading to, and others who have no idea what is taking place. They, they're thinking that, well, we still got 100 years Jesus may not come. I'm going to have grandchildren. I got, I'm going to plan next year. I'm going to go on this and do all these things. They think, oh, this will phase. This will only be temporary. What a surprise. Right? So this is where we are. In these last days, many are spiritually blind. Yeah. Mm. What did Jesus say about Laodicea? Blind. Blind. You blind, you cannot see. No spiritual discernment. You do not have the eyesight. You don't have the Holy Spirit. That's why they are blind. In these last days, it is everywhere. So just as Jesus spoke the same thing over and over to them, they did not get it. Listen to what it says in Great Controversy. The events connected with the close of probation, when Michael stands up, and the work of preparation for the time of trouble are clearly presented, Luke 18, and throughout the Word of God. But multitudes have no more understanding of these important truths than if they have never been revealed. Yes. Satan deceives the whole world. They have no idea. Satan watches to catch away every impression that would make them wise unto salvation. And the time of trouble will find them un unready, unprepared. So therefore, it says Satan watches to catch away every impression that will make them wise unto salvation. So what is happening? These people are sitting up under false teachers. Yeah. Because they're not hearing nothing That's that right. will get them to be ready for the close of probation That's and the work of preparation. So because they're not hearing nothing, and because they're not studying themselves, well, this we got multitudes, we got years till Jesus was come. Right? So therefore, they just live and enjoy life because they think, well, people have been saying for years now Jesus is coming. What is the delay? There's no difference now. These things keep happening. Not realizing that Jesus is waiting on us, the church, to be ready. When the character of Christ is perfectly yes, reduced to his people, yes. then he will come to claim his people as his own. Yes. So he's waiting on us. But these people think they're basically waiting on Jesus and Jesus is waiting on us. So those who are waiting on Jesus, when Jesus is going to come, he's waiting on us. So therefore, they are deceived. So therefore, even though the Bible says it, they have no more understanding of these important truths than if it had never been revealed. When the mark of the beast comes, they're going to be as shocked as just as someone who has never read the Bible in their whole lives. What is happening? What? I've been warning you. I've been telling you these things are coming for all these years. Really? Well, you see? They want the movies, they want the world, they, the, all the rappers or the music or the television, that's what they want. Satan has them sleeping. Mm. So as this speaks about in God's church, these two classes, those spiritually blind, no eyesight, no understanding of what's happening. You cannot be linked up with these people because they're going to pull you down. They're going to pull you back in your world. You must be aware of what is taking place. And lastly, because there are blind people in the church... Spiritually blind, have no discernment. What does Jesus speak about in the next Luke chapter 35? And it came to pass as he was come night unto Jericho, a certain what? What? 
Blind, you see? Blind man sat by the way begging. And hearing a multitude pass by, he asked what it melts. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on and when and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. So the blind man is saying, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. And here we see people rebuking him. Who is blind? Who is the blind one here spiritually? And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. You see, faith keep coming back. Faith. And immediately he received his sight and followed him. Glorifying God and all the people when they saw it give praise unto God. So here they want to silence, silence that preaching, you know. That's like with the conference, and everything. Oh, the market of the beast isn't coming right now. Don't talk about all these things right now. It's gonna be waiting and just we'll let you know when to get ready. Right? There's nothing going on in the pipeline. It's it's gonna be years later. We'll tell you when to go to the country. Listen to us, right? You'll be waiting on them and events come and pass and you done lost. But here, the blind person had spiritual discernment. And those who had eyes were spiritually blind. So this is what Jesus is saying. Spiritual blindness is rampant. That's why Jesus said, of Laodicea, blind, wretched, miserable, naked. Okay? That's the condition. So the blind person has spiritual discernment. And unlike the disciples who right before did not understand the words of Jesus, when it says we didn't understand his words, she, we're told that it's when Pentecost, at that time, in the upper room, they said, oh, if we could get back those three years back, and we would have just so cherished more and understood and walked with Jesus. Because he was warning them. So whereas... Jesus died on the Friday, 3 o'clock. They are there, panicking, worrying about the Romans, closed up, their heart broken, Jesus died. They should have been rejoicing and saying, watch him come from that tomb. Should have been right across the tomb and say, watch this. And they just waited. Because he said, Sunday morning, three days and a half. And then when Gabriel cries out, ha ha, praise the Lord. But they were just as terror stricken so that when the news come to them, they didn't even believe it. And that's why it says in Mark, he upbraided them because of their unbelief. Yes. So Mary sees him and he sends another person. Then the road to Emmaus. And then finally, but they should have been rejoiced because he warned them. Yes. But it just flew over. So Jesus is telling us what is going to come. And he doesn't want us to be caught off guard. So we got to learn from the disciples. Yes. Know all these times. Knowing the time and know what we ought to do and not be caught unawares. But here we see this blind man, first he cried out, but then he cried out even more louder. So it shows a parallel that the blind man will be similar to our time as those who receive the latter rain. And they're going to preach the message, but then the latter rain is going to go up another level to the loud cry, come out of her, my people, when it goes worldwide. So just as he, he was crying first, but then he cried out the war. Jesus, save me. So the message will start off, latter rain, but then it's going to go to a loud cry to the whole world with the universal Sunday law. So this year in Luke 18, this whole chapter has a direct bearing on the experience we need to be having with God right now to be able to pass through the time of trouble. The whole chapter, the trust, the prayer life, the, the understanding the blindness, the perseverance, all of that in this whole chapter is teaching us how to be ready and with God all things are possible. Amen? Amen. So this is what God wants of His church, the endurance of the saints. Luke chapter 18. Jesus does not want us to be caught off guard. Amen? Amen. So if you want to be among that group, 
who will be faithful until the end and usher in the second coming of Jesus. So let's all stand together and let us have a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Loving Father in heaven, we your children here are so thankful as we see you have warned us in easy to understood language in one chapter preparation for your soon coming many are fearful many are worried many are panicked and have anxiety we ask that you would come into their hearts and give them peace for you are the prince of peace help us to have strong faith so that whatever satan brings upon this world we will not be caught off guard but we will be ready for what is to take place i pray that you would be with this entire midnight cry ministry church and as we continue to work for thee i pray that you would bless our efforts all of us have family members who are not abiding with you and it is our prayer that you will send angels from on high that the holy spirit will convict hearts so that in our families they will all make decisions for christ so that the harness of their hearts will be broken and that they would surrender to thee and i pray that you would continue to bless the evangelism that has been done all the literature that has gone forward i pray that every home that has received the literature that angels will mark the books and that at the right time that they would seek these truths and they will be converted by the truth continue to bless in jesus name we pray amen, amen.